So the other week I took a look at using feature flags to dynamically render components in Angular. Uh, but what I realized is I've never actually looked at how I typically load and use remote feature flags in an Angular application. And it's fairly straightforward. The concept of feature flags is more of a concept than it is a construct. So really what this is is generally just going to be looking at how to load and use remote data that's required as part of the bootstrapping of an Angular application. So imagine for the sake of this exploration that this JSON file represents a remote AJAX call to an API server. And let's say that we need to make this as part of the Angular bootstrapping process. And part of this is a, uh, is a key here that contains the feature flags that are specific to this particular user, the user making the request to render the Angular application. You can see that here, feature A is turned on, feature B is turned off, and feature C is turned on. So how do we get this data from the remote API server, make it part of the Angular context, and then use that to bootstrap the rest of the application? Well, thankfully, Angular actually has all the mechanics that we need built uh, into the, the provided framework. Uh, so what we're going to be using is a simple service here that has sort of a two-part uh, two part, uh, that plays two parts in this process, forgive me. Uh, one is that it's going to expose the feature flags configuration on its public API so that this app config class can then be injected into other providers and other classes to expose this feature flag data. But then it's also going to use the HTTP client to load the remote configuration data during the bootstrapping process. So what you'll see is that this class is actually fairly simple. It exposes one load remote config method that returns a promise, and we're going to use this asynchronous nature to block the application bootstrapping such that we can reach out to the remote server, get that config JSON object, and then what you can see is all we're doing is merging this remote configuration into the local instance of the app config. So essentially, this config.json file should look like the public properties of our app config service. Now in this case, I don't have the user and the company here in my public API of the app config uh, because I'm focusing on the feature flags, but certainly we could add user and company such that the app config would then uh, reflect that portion of the remote data. Now you'll notice that I'm using the definite assignment assertion here which is part of TypeScript, which just says that in the constructor, I don't have to initialize this data because this data will be provided later on. And that's what the uh, object.assign call is doing in this case. Uh, there's no need to fuss around with default values when we know that we're only ever going to completely override all of these values during the bootstrapping process. So how does the load remote config method work to block the Angular application bootstrapping such that all of this remote data becomes available prior to the rest of the application bootstrap. Well, let's look at the uh, root module here, and that's where this app initializer provider comes into play. App initializer is a multi-provider that expects an asynchronous function, a function that returns a promise, and will block the rest of the application bootstrapping until this promise resolves. And what you can see is that this function here, this async initializer, all it's doing is taking that app config class and calling that load remote config. So this method, remember, is making that AJAX call to get this JSON payload. It's then merging that JSON payload into the app config API. And when that resolves, this app initializer will resolve, and then the rest of the Angular bootstrapping process is allowed to continue. Now, once this app config has been uh, hydrated, so to speak, with that remote configuration data and the rest of the Angular application has been bootstrapped, we can then use the app config service as a provider of that configuration data, and we can inject this app config into other classes. So, for example, let's look at our app component, our root component. You can see here in the constructor for the app component, I'm injecting that app config instance we can see that the app config instance already has the feature flags properties that have been uh, injected or hydrated by that remote configuration object into the app config API. 
I'm checking to see what the feature flags are, and I'm just using those to set some Boolean values here on the public uh, API of the app config, of the app component, sorry. And then inside of my component template, all I'm using is the ng if directive to check those feature flag values and determine whether or not those portions of the template are turned on and off. So if remember, right, if we're looking at the remote configuration here, we can see feature A is turned on, B is off, and C is on. So what we should expect to see is that this portion of the template shows because we're showing feature A. This part should be off because feature B is not enabled, and this part should show because feature C is enabled. And if we jump over into the browser, and let's refresh, that's exactly what we see. We see feature A enabled and feature C enabled, but what we can see is that feature B is not enabled. Uh, and here we can see in the network activity, the call to the JSON object on the remote server. And you can see again, feature A turned on, which is what we see here. Feature B turned off, which is why we don't see it in here. And feature C is turned on, which is why we're seeing it here. And if we look at the console, here you can see is the remote configuration data that's been loaded by the uh, app config class. And again, we see that true, false, true in our feature flags. Those feature flags, again, then get hydrated into the public uh, API of that app config class. That app config class then gets injected into the rest of the application where we can easily see the feature flags. Um, and I would stress that feature flags are a fairly simple mechanic. Uh, the, the revolutionary part of feature flags is how you think about them and how you use them to change your application development process. Uh, but from a mechanical standpoint, they're essentially uh, you know, Booleans and some other types of more complex variations that you use to change the way you render and, and, and execute control flow. Uh, there's nothing really special about them from a data structure standpoint. So there's no reason to have custom directives that help you manage feature flags. Essentially, it's just glorified NGIF and things like ng switch statements all over the place. Uh, so don't overthink it. Feature flags mechanically are very simple. Uh, philosophically, that's where it becomes a little bit more magical, a little bit more interesting. So hopefully, uh, what we can see here is that we're using the app initializer provider. That's part of the Angular framework. We're using that to create an asynchronous initializer that fetches remote data. And as it's doing that, Angular is blocking the rest of the application bootstrapping process. Then once this promise that gets returned from the, uh, the once this promise which loads the remote configuration data resolves, Angular bootstraps the rest of the application, at which point other parts of the application, like the component, like other services, can inject that hydrated app config object and then read that remote configuration data. And, uh, and that's basically it. Um, in this case, I am leaving the feature flags as part of the app config. You don't necessarily have to do this. You could create a feature flag service that either the app config hydrates or you could create another uh, provider down here somewhere uh, that uses the app config to then hydrate uh, some other service, again, like a feature flag service, or creates a dependency injection token that could set default values on a feature flag service. Uh, but for stuff like this, I feel like it doesn't really have to get more complicated than, than, than what we have here. Again, feature flags are mechanically super simple, right? The, the complexity of feature flags is not in the mechanics, it's in the application development process. Uh, so I would just say don't overthink it, don't overcomplicate it, keep it simple, and just start integrating feature flags into your application development.